If you were a kid and aliens invaded Earth while your parents were away, what would you do? These kids just wanted to spend Halloween filming the greatest childhood movie ever made until teens took over their house for a thumping neon party that drew in every invading alien like moths to a bonfire. Now, they'll have to outmaneuver the creatures before their gooey flesh is harvested to fuel the aliens' mothership. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat them aliens in kids versus aliens santa claus has fallen on hard times with so many gifts going digital and the economy in the crapper he's taking a job as a captain aboard an all-night fishing boat not that he's catching anything it's more like something's catching him a bright light fills the wheelhouse before something crashes into the ocean by their boat his two crewmen begin to panic one backs up and suddenly disappears with a splash so of course, the captain walks right over to look for him while his last crewman practically leans over the edge and gets pulled off too. Guys, you didn't have any trouble staying aboard before this thing showed up. Might I suggest stepping away from the edge? The captain is the last to go. Who's out there? <laughs> Pity, and here I thought all captains carried knives. Back on land, a bunch of goobers dressed as Buzz Lightyear T-Rexes film the movie of all our 12-year-old dreams. They do it in a weird warehouse that everyone keeps saying is abandoned, but looks like the prop house of an 80s kids movie on the inside, and a Newport Beach mansion on the outside. That's easily two million on the Rhode Island coast. Gary, Miles, and Jack, along with Gary's older sister Sam, are deep into on-the-spot scene re rights of their wrestling robot dinosaurs movie when a glass bottle sails through the air and shatters over miles' head Jesus Christ maybe this is the 80s with how little everyone gives a f about slicing this kid's head open seriously he's actually bleeding the teenage bully who threw it is named Billy and he along with his two bargain bin friends Trish and Dallas have decided that Sam and Gary's house will be the spot for their next party and Billy sets his sights on Sam who's way too into a dude who just tried to give a 10 year old a Glasgow smile from 20 paces. When the bullies leave, Sam abandons filming to work on her Halloween costume. And because the death switch in kids is triggered when adults appear, Gary immediately climbs up a ladder, slips, and breaks his arm. Mom and Dad are gonna pick! I just broke my arm! Can you stop yelling at me for a f second? All right. This is great. It's almost like the filmmakers have actually been around kids before. Gary gets patched up, and despite already failing at her job, the world's worst parents put Sam in charge of babysitting her brother all weekend while they leave the country. Sure, maybe if you leave, he'll get himself killed, and you can blame that on her too. The kids get back to filming their masterpiece when this happens. <laughs> Billy, the once and future sociopath, saunters off like he didn't just try to grease three toddlers playing dinosaur. I'll give him 8 out of 10 for flair. But then he kicks over toys and leaves his car in the presence of the goblins like they're not about to leave a deuce on his hood. Instead, they bust in on Sam and Billy playing dress down in her bedroom and begin pelting him with toys. Kids these days, have you never seen Home Alone? Where's the blowtorch and the falling body weights? Your parents have failed you. Suddenly, the same same bright light from the fisherman attack shines through the bedroom window. The house lights turn on and off. Sam tosses the boys out of her room, dismissing it all as random inconvenience, and gets back to sucking face. The kids wander onto the dock when the gold light begins to flash off the coast, drawing them in. Wait, guys! like an angler luring in its prey. Only Jack's worried about it, and the other two decide not to tell Sam. They return inside as something crawls onto the dock behind them. The next day, Billy and his friends peer pressure Sam into letting them throw a Halloween party, oblivious to the menace right below their feet. <laughs> Despite Billy's promise that the party will be small, it's an instant rager. People start painting on walls, vomiting in silverware drawers, and smashing decorations. Kudos for the impossible amount of planning needed to pull off those strobe lights the buffet of booze in half a day. Sam decides to stop the party about two hours too late, and Billy's happy to go full villain on her immediately. What the f are you doing? Stop hurting me. You're scared of the party, and that's what we're gonna do. Scared. 
He tells people to go wild and destroy everything. This is why you don't date dicks who throw glass bottles and try to run over kids. And while he's not looking, we're going to join our actual friends and call 911. Narking's usually lame, but not when they're about to burn your family's livelihood to the ground. Being around friends or going into a room you can lock or standing on something where everyone else can see you while you call will make it tougher for Billy to retaliate against you. Upstairs, Jack and Miles climb through Gary's window after trick-or-treating to watch him spy on the party downstairs, but they have their own voyeur. What a stupid idiot. They trigger a video to play on all the TVs in the house, condemning Sam for bailing on them to hang out with someone like Billy. Then play clips of him not only making fun of her, but pissing in her room and sleeping with Trish in her bed. Billy's not even ashamed of it. Sam, turn around and beat his ass to the ground. I'd love to say grab this bottle right here and smash it over his head, but he's not worth the prison time. Instead, I'd say use your wrestling training to humiliate him. Right now, in front of the entire school. It's the only thing a creep like him will ever understand. But also, Gary, I know she's gonna come to your rescue during this alien invasion that is taking way too long to actually kick off, but this is so uncool. You deserve the wedgie I hope she gives you later. Billy drags the kids out in front of the entire party. Sam just watches as he twists Gary's already broken arm behind his back and prepares to break it again. Sam, what the fuck are you waiting for? Gary deserves to be punished but by you, not some psychopath an 18th birthday away from going to adult prison. Gary is saved at the last minute by the sudden invasion. <laughs> party scatters. For a moment, it looks like the aliens have an almost refined sense of moral judgment. They capture only Billy, Dallas, and Trish, but soon we realize they've entirely infiltrated the party, and no one can tell them apart from the costumed guests until it's too late. They grab a Miles in the kitchen and Gary in the hallway. Jack is snagged off screen. Sam bolts for her bedroom, where she wedges herself against the unlockable door to keep them out. <laughs> If you can see their fingers wedged in the crack of the door, slam your back into the door repeatedly until they pull them back or you break their fingers off. Especially since you don't seem to be working overtime to keep them out. Seems like minimal force is all you need. Outside, the aliens waste zero time dragging the kids out to sea. <laughs> This is a bad time, and their best chance in any abduction is in these first few seconds. Their attackers are at least twice their size. We don't know their physical strength or whether they have secret weapons or skills. And we're on uneven footing, being dragged rather than in an offensive position where we can fight back. Let's do this in segments. <laughs> Jack here is on his butt, being pulled backward by the collar of his shirt. If he can slip out of it, that's an option. Although you'll be blind until the shirt is off. He can reach the alien's exposed arms, thighs, and surprisingly robust muscular squidward butt. He needs to start clawing with his nails or reach up and bite into the alien's arm. I'd say gouge out a nice new pocket in his leg. Anything to get him to let you go and potentially injure him so he can't chase you when you run. As for Miles, on his back being pulled by his legs, he's actually being dragged by his left foot while his right leg dangles off to the side. That free foot is today's volunteer melee weapon. Kick his knee, his ankle, with the wrist holding your other leg. Trip him, slam it down on one of his feet as he walks. Anything. Also, if possible, drag your hands for a potential weapon. A sharp stick will impale a leg. A stone can be hidden to use as a blunt weapon later. No! Gary's being pulled sort of similarly to Jack, but into the water. Before getting this deeply in, try to use your abductor's momentum against them. The last thing a kidnapper expects is for you to push in the direction you're being dragged. Kicking off the ground and propelling your body toward them could dislodge their hold or break their momentum. You may even hit their back or legs, knocking them forward onto their stomach. Screaming for help like they do is a valid strategy to teach your kids, and it could save their life one day. But when they've all already got you, it's time to fight. Sam remains in place until the door stops moving and the alien's growling fades into the distance. She immediately opens the door to go look for Gary, which is just suburban level naive. For all you knew, the alien just changed strategy and was waiting outside the door for you to open up. When we leave this room, it'll be with any weapon we can find. Hell, a desk chair that we can wield lion tamer style is better than nothing. Sam goes to the prop warehouse and suits up. 
in dive gear, once again bringing no weapons with her. Not even a slingshot or marbles? What kind of kids movie is this? Sam dives down into the alien Hellraiser ship and narrowly avoids being spotted when a group of them barrels through the tunnels. In a side room, she finds a medieval knight's skeleton, suggesting the aliens have visited before. Well, isn't that lucky, Queen Arthur? For the rest of us peasants who aren't the future ruler of alien Camelot, we'll need to bring several knives at least and guns, but I'm not telling kids where to get those. Smash a mirror for the shards or settle for some forks and workshop tools if that's what you have. She goes deeper and finds a central room where aliens were considerate enough to gather only the main characters. They chain Trish to a stalagmite and begin to gargle. <laughs> God damn, that's the best kill I've seen in a long time. Someone called James A. Janice. We need a golden chainsaw award over here ASAP. Speaking of unabashed meatbag brutalization in full view without mommy YouTube blocking you, Tailgate is up on my Patreon, which is probably one of the more realistic scenarios you could face. I've got 16 Patreon exclusives, with one new how to beat coming every week, with 52 uncensored versions of all my latest videos, including this one. 1,017 of you nerds are already paid Patrons. And damn it, I respect the effort of typing your CC into another platform and dedicating your hard earned dollars to my channel specifically. Thank you. For those of you that aren't patrons, but have watched my videos since, let's say, my Master Chief will drown video, shame on you. Shame. All right, where were we? The aliens toss her skeleton aside and take a run at Billy, who throws Dallas at them instead. The boys seize their chance of escape, but evil Billy holds on to them as human shields to postpone his own demise. Bite down on his arms, gouge out his eyes, f this dude in particular. The aliens tie Gary to the flesh melting machine, but Dallas gets his own special room where the queen can take her time with him. Holy <laughs> That is not the snoo snoo I was promised. Sam finally comes out of hiding, slashes her way through two aliens, and frees the kids. But Billy is bolted. Down the hall, he finds Dallas halfway through his transformation into an alien. Dallas breaks his restraints, forcing Billy to flee. More aliens surround Sam and the kids as they run. They spot Billy stealing Sam's diving gear and have to free dive to the surface. Sam's not fast enough. An alien grabs her halfway up, and Jack just disappears. Gary and Miles prepare to dive back in to save them when Sam appears carrying Jack's body. He isn't breathing. She applies chest compressions and mouth to mouth with terrible technique. Movie magic compels him back to life. They scramble for the house, but Billy's barricaded it from the inside and in that he locked all the windows and doors and tells them they're sh out of luck. Fine, go grab the hide -a key Don't even act like there isn't one. Better yet, hide for that prop warehouse and barricade yourselves in there. It has better weapons anyway. Dallas Alice suddenly growls behind them and charges, but it isn't the kids he's interested in. Billy runs out to his car and hides using the seat down trick. Clever girl. Just a shame you don't have a blanket or, you know, your keys. Dallas rips off the door. Billy scorches his face with an aerosol flamethrower that lets him escape into the woods, which is where the other kids and Sam also ran. Excuse me. Chekhov's warehouse called. I was promised a kick showdown with toys and lawn tools. The aliens zero in on their location and the kids bolt again. Sam runs interference, stabbing one before two corner her. She swings to keep them back, but she needs to get them in a straight line formation for better offense and defense. A straight line formation basically means maneuvering your opponents into a straight line so they can't attack you simultaneously. That way, she can either run or attack them one-on-one. -on -one. Instead, she gets lucky and they attack that way anyway. <laughs> They finally head for the barn, but Billy's waiting and takes Sam hostage with the sword to her throat. In this position, it may seem like she's at his mercy, but it only seems that way. This, just like dragging someone, relies on consistent tension between the attacker and the victim. They're assuming you're going to tense, freeze, or go for the knife. What you need to do is distract them by raising your hands, palms outward, as if surrendering, while repeatedly saying, I'll do whatever you want. Once they've seen you do this, 
this. Slowly move your hands closer and closer to their arm and the blade so that they become accustomed to seeing your hands and feeling your touch. Lure them into a false sense of security so they don't even think about why your hands are there. Then, when they're distracted or the tension in their grip slacks off, grab the wrist with both your hands and shove backward into their core while pushing the blade away from your throat. Not, I repeat, not across your throat. That's a good way to do their job for them. The kids realize he's terrified that Dallas will find him, so they begin loudly shouting to alert the aliens to their location. Instead of this, I would have stoked Billy's fears a different way. I would have told him to stay put and then run off into the barn telling him we need to barricade the doors. Then I would have slipped around behind him with a weapon to spear him through the back of the leg or the foot. Something that keeps us out of retaliation range, but will still incapacitate him. Sam is competent enough to know what to do when the distraction hits. That's kind of what happened. But it's all movie logic here. Jack sneaks up behind him with a chain and leaps onto his back while the other two go for his arms. Yeah, this is a great way to get hurled across the room into a wall while your two buddies get stabbed, which is almost exactly what happens. <laughs> I take back what I said. Sam did not know what to do with the distraction. She was off putting on costume armor instead of grabbing a weapon. You idiot. The barn door suddenly swings open and Dallas is there. Gary and Sam break for the basement, but leave the door open so Billy can follow them. God. Billy chases them to a ladder leading up into the attic, but he's over enthusiastic with the thrust. Sam shatters his nose and grabs the sword. <laughs> Aliens burst in, and Sam and Gary climb, leaving Billy to his long overdue fate. I know you stole my money. So fight it, man. <laughs> Dallas chases them into the attic, and in the most 80s movie ever, Sam dropkicks his bully's ass through the roof. Awesome, but also, you and I don't live in Hollywood's magical version of the 80s, so we're gonna pull a move that has worked before, and we're going to slice Dallas's leg clean through, then stab him through the head, just like we did to the aliens in the woods. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Then, we're going to barricade that access door with wood, or our sword, and wait until the invasion is over. Instead, with a giant hole in the roof now, the ship begins trying to pull Gary in. Sam tries to hold on, but can't. Gary's on the cusp of being taken when more aliens crawl into the attic. Downstairs, Jack reminds Miles of the grand finale full of fireworks and apparently explosives that he had planned for the movie. Miles ties it to a garden cart and sends it out to be taken by the ship. The ship explodes and Sam finishes off the attic stragglers. <laughs> The pair race down to help Jack by getting him to his feet and taking him to a hospital. Yeah, uh, don't do this. He was just stabbed through and through, meaning he's losing blood from two wounds. Apply pressure to both to stop or slow the blood flow and call 911. Having him walk is only going to increase his blood flow directly to the two brand new exit routes out of his body. They get him into a wheelbarrow, but he dies when they get outside. More aliens appear when a blue light suddenly blinds them and gunfire mows the aliens down. It's the military, and they're indifferent to the kids' survival, as they suddenly bag them and store them with the other alien bodies in the back of a semi-truck. You thought this had a happy ending, but not this time, as another alien mother skull appears in the sky. The movie ends. There's a few stages to the story where there could have been a different outcome. The kids were getting taken no matter what, regardless of whether Billy dragged them out of the room or an alien broke in and took them. Sam would have gone for them, but we would have gone in heavily armed with knives, if nothing else. Once out again, we're heading straight for the barn and barricading it from within. If we need to, we can create a death funnel using a single access point and the sword to stab and lop off heads as they come. Billy's the real wild card, but ambushing him from behind with an actual crippling weapon would have prevented injury and Jack's death. If we had reached the barn first, Billy would have probably been trapped outside anyway. With the additional time we would have had to prepare, we could have gathered weapons into the attic, which is only accessible via the ladder shaft, which is already shaped like a medieval murder hole. In the attic, secure the door with a sword wedged onto the floor. If aliens break in, lop off their heads until they stop trying to enter, or we block the hole, or until we can use the murder hole to rain down attacks. Since none of us is kicking a full-grown man through the roof, there is no hole and Gary doesn't get sucked out, meaning we're ready with a sword to fight off anyone who enters. The military is the 
final twist. And it's likely the kids would have trusted them implicitly. But if Billy had been outside and still alive, we might have seen them bag him. Realized they were the bad guys, it dipped out into the forest headed in the opposite direction. After that, it's anyone's guess. Luck and quick thinking will make all the difference in the alien invasion to come. But Sam, Miles, Gary, and Jack would still be alive and free to fight their way through it. For those reasons, I think kids versus aliens was beat. And remember, psychopath identification is always a post-apocalyptic survival skill.